What's up guys, welcome to the video. Today, what we're gonna focus on is cutting a pixie cut, but I wanted to do this a little bit different. I wanted to do three different types of pixie cuts, so uh, over the next week, I'm gonna create a few different videos showcasing different types of pixies and different ways to cut them. Today, we're gonna cut one vertically, then in the next video, I'll probably cut one horizontally, and then I'll mix and match techniques to create the third one, uh, and then I'm gonna show you guys some coloring techniques on those. So. A lot of fun videos coming up. I uh, hope you're excited about that. Let me know in the comments. But also moving into 2019, I want to go crazy with content. So I want to create all different types of videos, podcasts, uh, Instagram posts. If you're not following me on Instagram, at Free Salon Education, go follow. There's so much stuff that I want to do, but I want to make sure that it's stuff that you guys are going to enjoy. So let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in 2019. But right now, let's get started with this video. Here we go. What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna focus on a vertical pixie haircut. The reason we're doing it vertical is because I'm gonna do a series of pixie haircuts over the next week and just showcase some different ways of cutting a pixie for you guys. So um, we start off, the sectioning's pretty simple. I go right along the parietal ridge, uh, which is the round of the head there. I go back across mid crown and then back around parietal ridge, creating almost like a horseshoe section on the top of the head. Then I take out a nice triangle section uh, working with diagonal back lines uh, that connect together to section out that crown area because I want to build up a little extra weight in there. Uh, whenever you're sectioning a haircut, you're really just telling the story of what that haircut's going to be. So I'm mapping out every move that I'm going to make. I'm going to start off in the front temple area. So I section that away and I don't work on the back um, I don't even think about the back until um, I finish the front. So we start off taking vertical partings, um, maybe with a slight diagonal back, but not much. Um, I'm gonna scoop my first section and I'm gonna cut that nice and close to the head. I'm really focusing on cutting at 90 degrees. So if you guys watched um, any of the past videos, if you watched the 90 degree haircut, this is a very similar technique to that, uh, making sure that you don't lower your elevation. Um, let the head shape kind of work in your favor, right? So the head shape at the tip of my finger is starting to peel away. And because that's peeling away, it's naturally gonna give me a little bit of a weight line. So don't overcompensate for that. Don't change your finger angle uh, when you're looking to create a nice flat uh, shape up the head. So I'm working my way back traveling guide um, this is a round haircut so everything is following the head shape so i take my vertical section i'm pushing the hair towards my guideline we've talked about that many times so i comb my section nice and small then i bring it over to that previous section only and i cut it there so i'm not um, over directing too much then i go through um basically horizontally, right? So um, I go in and I cross check using scissor over comb um, just to finalize and fine tune um, the shape that I've started. So now we're gonna work our way into the back. Still staying nice and vertical. Um, here is where you're gonna see me, I don't wanna say make a mistake, but kind of make a mistake, right? So um, this is the great thing about watching yourself back. I didn't notice it when I was doing the cut, but watch, because of the way that I'm holding my scissor, watch how I twist my fingers to get comfortable. And when I do that, look at the very bottom corner uh, of this haircut, and you can see it getting a little bit longer because of that slight twist. So now see how I shift um, the scissor in my fingers and I get more comfortable um, and more consistent. So now because I'm making that shift and I'm holding the scissor differently, I don't move my fingers. Um, so now I get the result that I'm looking for. I clean off that result or, or that longer length that I created using the scissor over comb technique when I cross check. That's why it's important to cross check, but it's also important to understand that if I would have held the scissors a little bit differently, I wouldn't have um, had those longer pieces when I went to cross check. So mistakes happen. It's why I recommend filming yourself doing haircuts, not to put them out on social media, but to just really assess yourself and your technique when you can sit back and look at it um, from afar. So you'll notice I'm still doing that scissor technique because from the occipital bone down, it really twists your hand into a weird position. So that just makes me more comfortable. So I'm basically putting my thumb in the opposite direction of the scissor. Um, so, and that helps me stay comfortable. So I'm just gonna continue through this section the same way, over directing to the previous section. 
and working my way to the, the uh, temple area. going to finish off doing a little bit of cross checking uh, horizontally so now I go in and this technique is going to be just cleaning up around the ears this is all customized to the haircut that you're trying to create so um, depending on what you want if you want to cut the ears out if you wanted it a little bit longer on the ears talk to your guests that's part of your consultation figure out what they're looking for so now I move into that back part and I'm going to really start to build up that weight. I want a little bit of extra weight in the crown area, but also know that the crown is starting to peel away. So as that head shape starts to move away from me, you can see that basically at the tip of my finger cutting at a 45 degree angle, which is a nice graduated line, right? So we're starting to build up weight, um, starting to get a more flattering shape at the crown area. And I just pivot and I work um, same way I did at the bottom part of the head. The only difference is I'm using the head shape to um, build up my graduation. So still working vertically, working around the head shape, bringing the section back to my previous. So now we're gonna move into the top part of the haircut. This is kind of like the, the part that makes the haircut sing. It's really what makes it unique. The, the sides in the back are obviously all pretty much cut at one length. Um, you're just trying to get a really nice clean look to it. But now you go in the top, you really need to add the personality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by cutting my guide to connect the back, but then changing my finger angle so I push length into the front. So I'm building up that length so I have a lot of hair to play with at the very end. We're gonna do a little bit of texturizing techniques um, so you can see my finger angle, you can see that length building up. So I cut my guide straight down the head shape first. The reason I do this is I really wanna figure out that length that I'm looking for. So I cut it uh, the one time and I noticed, you know what, I want it a little bit shorter. So I go in and I cut it a little bit shorter. Now I've got my guide all the way through the middle. So I've got my guide on the sides that I cut earlier and I've got my guide in the middle uh, which I go through and I just connect those two uh, points together. So connecting the side and the very top middle. This is a really cool technique. You could even do it on men's cutting. Uh, if you're looking to uh, just create your longest point in the very center to connect those two pieces together, uh, it's a really cool technique for that. And because I changed my finger angle and I, I built that length in towards the front, now when I'm connecting those two points, I'm really following that pattern so I get that look, that, the exact look that I was looking for uh, in this cut. Slight over direction back at the very front, just because I wanted to push a little extra length. It's always to take easy to take a little bit of length off the front instead of um, trying to put hair back on. So same thing here, the biggest difference on this side is that I'm standing in front of the head instead of behind. The reason I did that is I want to cut the hair the exact same. So I don't wanna be um, cutting short to long on one side and then long to short on the other. That just means that I might be pushing weight a little bit different on each side. So finishing up, everything straight up, connecting those two points and then that last section uh, is gonna get a slight over direction back just to push a little bit of extra length. So right here, little bit of over direction back, not too much, connect those two points and now you've got your long front. So my first product choice for this hairstyle is the Joico Firm Hold Design Foam. Love putting this in the hair. It makes the hair feel nice and thick. So if you have fine hair, it's great to put a base product on first, then blow dry the hair, then put your final product on in the end. So I go through a blow dry, nice flat wrap technique, 
pushing up some volume in this uh, style and then right here you can see I kind of blow dry just to pump up the volume in the very front of the hairstyle and now I'm gonna go through do some dry cutting techniques this is slide cutting notice how I kind of close the blade on this technique so I'm half closing as I slide it down and just working my way through the top of the head cutting channels in creating texture then I go through a little bit of point cutting um, just to break up the hair add a little bit of texture to it um, and that'll really finalize the look so it's just really putting the dressing on the top last product is the Joico body shake texturizing finisher this is a really first off delicious smelling product but as soon as you spray it in see that texture that happens um, another great product for creating that thick feeling uh, in fine hair um, also great for thick hair as well as long as you cut some texture into it so see this like technique coming uh, to life I love this product in there you can see the texture you can see uh, you know all these techniques that we did coming together thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you guys on the next video thanks